Hey everybody, we are back for episode 145. Woo! Um, we're going to make the intro um, short because we have a big show. We have a big show. <laughs> First of all, apologies for not doing one last week. Yeah, we just kind of ran out of time. and uh... <laughs> Somebody's mother had to have a birthday brunch last weekend. <laughs> Jennifer got really drunk. Yeah. So we couldn't. So it was pretty much, yeah. That's not true at all. <laughs> By the way, I just, all the, as you said, we'll do it briefly, but I have to point out the University of Illinois won their second football game of the year. Okay. Sadly, I made a big deal. I crowed a lot about them beating Nebraska the, the opening very first game. week. Then they lost four straight. Yeah. But they did win today, so there's that. Anyway. So happy October. Happy uh, October. We have a new um, opening photograph. Yeah. So our son took that picture today. Um, so kudos to Mark for being our photographer. Right. And we're just going to change it with the seasons. Although I will point out that despite the fall scene and the, the you know, fall Flannel. kind of gear. <laughs> um, it was 80 degrees it today. It was 80 <laughs> degrees today. You might have seen earlier we posted a video from our walk where there was a very large bird yep um it seems like at least from a couple of comments the consensus seems to be that it might have been a sandhill crane not a heron although we have both in the area and when we google the pictures of them they look kind of the same they do so we're not entirely sure but it was weird to see one so close yeah and we've um, seen many around in fact one we, while we were in the pool this <laughs> <yeah>. afternoon <laughs> one flew overhead yes um but not presumably not the one we saw today because it did appear to be injured. It did, so that's kind of sad. Uh, so we hope you're, that bird's okay. Uh, into the, this week's episode, we have cooking, we've got cats, and we've got music. So um, I right. don't know what more you guys could want. <laughs> that's right. In fact, we have a new feature. We may not do it every week. Yeah. But uh, the cats uh, are kind of crazy, and so I started following one of them around videoing her odd behavior <clears throat> pardon me i'm not getting choked up i just <laughs> i just I, I just had a little frog in my throat uh and we decided that would be kind of a fun little feature so and our, you guys seem to like our cats so, our uh, crazy cats yes and since we're home all day with them um they yes. do a lot of um stuff we get to see so we're sharing that some with you. And then um, we made a um, meal. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll have to see That's the video right. to see it. That's we'll right. post the link to the recipe because it was quite delicious. It was quite delicious. We had it two nights in a row. We had leftovers, so we had the um, That's true. there. And then in honor of Bruce Springsteen's birthday, um, there's some music. Yep. So we hope you like this episode and enjoy. We are back with another cooking segment. Um, tonight we are making chicken burritos, which we haven't done in a long time. We make chicken often. Uh, I think that's the only thing we've done <laughs> <I know. laughs> in all the time. <laughs> I think you're right. Another version, another chicken. If you like chicken, here's another uh, recipe for you. But this one is kind of good because um, the seasoning is pretty much seasonings you probably already have on hand. And then you just cut up vegetables and we're gonna um, put black beans in it. Um, we've got salsa, guacamole salsa, which you love. And um, so I've already kind of like um, cut the chicken into like cutlets kind of thing. So it'll be a quicker cook kind of thing. Um, but we're just going to take you on the journey. Okay. All right. I've got my glasses on so I can actually read uh, the recipe. So um, we're going to put onion powder, dried oregano, salt, cumin, paprika, black pepper, and a little bit of cayenne. I'm not gonna go heavy on that because I know it's like super spicy and I don't want it to be like too spicy. Uh, but I'm actually gonna add that to this bag that has the um, chicken in it. So um, we have- You can see the vegan um, croissants in the background. <laughs> yes. And a dirty toaster. <laughs> it's hard to keep a toaster clean. It is. Um, and actually, every anytime you clean it, as soon as somebody does it, then it's like all of it. So I'm doing a teaspoon of onion powder. Drop that in there. That's a half teaspoon, so I'm going to do two of those. And then um, dried oregano. And this will kind of be, I'm just going to like, once we put it in here, kind of like mix the seasonings all around. In the bag. In the bag. To make it a little easier. Yeah. Because um, we don't like chicken. How much of the, how, yeah. A teaspoon of dried oregano. I and think you only put half in. 
Oh, you were right. I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want, you're the expert, but. And then. Um, I may have distracted you by asking questions. A teaspoon of um, salt. Put that in there. And then um, two teaspoons of cumin. Don't we have a regular teaspoon? No. We probably do somewhere, <laughs> which would probably make it easier um, than doing this. We actually had an incident. So if you see this um, ceramic um, thing, we had an incident where one went in our garbage disposal. <laughs> So that's it didn't survive, <laughs> and that was only two, so. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> so that's gonna be four. No one, wa no one wants to do math. Yeah, thank you, uh, honey. I'm keeping tabs. Yeah. Okay, so that's that, and then um, paprika. So it's gonna be four of these. <laughs> I think this is gonna be pretty smoky, but which is good. All right and um, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I can never get those open. So you only want half of that? Yes. Half, half of a half. Half of a half. That's math. And then I'm gonna do like, also like a quarter of the cayenne pepper because that is really spicy. And hopefully we'll be able to find all the um, tops that go on these. So oh yeah. <laughs> You may not want to mix them up because you probably don't want the cayenne pepper on something. No, else. I do not. So I'm just gonna kind of um, mix it together. Mix it together. Looks really good. It does. Okay, so we set that aside for a second, but then I also want to show you so. Um, we like Frontera salsa, so we we're gonna have that. Uh, you can dip it in there. From um, your friend. Yeah, Rick Bayless. <laughs> um, black beans, which we're gonna drain. We have a shortcut of the microwave brown rice, so we're gonna microwave a cup of that, so somebody can add that to their um, burrito. David likes tomato. Um, we have green pepper, a poblano pepper, which could be spicy or not. It doesn't it depends? A white onion and then cilantro. Um, I keep the cilantro in a jar, um, so um, it'll stay fresher longer. Um, so yeah, we'll um, come back and show you how it's going. Oops. All right, now we are in the um, cutting up vegetable um, portion of this. The poblano, we're actually gonna take the seeds out because it could be really spicy. And the one thing we forgot, super important, is cheese. That's what's gonna hold yeah. everything together. Um, I put the chicken on so it's cooking. You can hear it kind of sizzling really in the sizzling. background. It is funny when the last time we recorded, it's very loud. <laughs> yeah, um, that's so true. we're like talking, and you need to talk a little bit louder by the stove because the food is um, you very sharp. You do. Um, which is, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's kind of funny because you don't really hear those sounds a lot like on a cooking show. Um, they have better uh, equipment. Probably. Trying to cut it up kind of small because you don't want to overstuff the burrito. Yeah, because we're trying to um, do like a salad bar, so cut up the ingredients, and then we can add what we want to each of our things. Whoa, that was almost dangerous. And I got burrito sized tortillas, although they're not as big <laughs> as I thought they were going to be. They so, are not. Um, yeah, that's a lie. <laughs> uh, so, I just wanted to share how we're coming so far. So, uh, I just took the um, chicken off the stove. Look how good that looks. It looks great. And uh, for the cutlets this size, um, generally we do four minutes aside. So I'm gonna let it sit there for a few minutes just to kind of like um, redistribute distribute the juices. But we have the green pepper, poblano, cilantro, onion, uh, the tomato, uh, black beans, and uh, we're gonna break out the tortilla chips. We'll have a chips and salsa party. We only did a small amount of the uh, poblano because you never know how hot it is. Yes. And like we said before, we took the seeds out. So there's more bell pepper and onion, but just kind of a little bit of that. And another tip, um, so as you can see, even though it says burrito, they're, they're not 
like they're a mini burrito. burrito. It's a mini burrito. It's not like normally, a. I was like, thinking like a Chipotle but burrito. You know. Right. Kind of well, thing. And normally when you get the tortillas for burritos, they're, it's almost the size of a dinner plate. Yeah. Because you want to be able to fold it over. That's everything. the thing, because we've been burned before over stuffing, and then it falls apart when we try to um, seal it on the stove. So I'm going to clean out the pan, the skillet that we cook the chicken in. Um, and then um, we're going to chop up the chicken and then um, kind of assemble everything up. Another point, important tip I was going to say about the tortillas is you want to heat them up so that they're pliable. Right. Um, so they don't break. So it's coming together. It's actually, this is a quick dinner. It is. Um, so not bad at all. Hot. So now we have the um, chicken cut up, which looks amazing. And now we're going to start the assembly process. Forgot about the rice. We cooked that. Um, so wish us luck. <laughs> And so it begins. I'm going to try not to overstuff mine because you can always make two. Um, that is true. I won't stick my fingers in the black beans. I want you to stick <laughs> your fingers in there. I think it would be entertaining. Get some rice. Although I will say, when we've done it in the past, you made the fancy rice that was supposed to be like uh, I did. chipotle with a little lime I and all that. I did the chipotle lime rice, which that is not a hard good. recipe to do. I'm going to put the cheese here. See, I then... like to put the cheese on top of the chicken. Although in this, it won't matter so much because we're going to still heat it up. Yeah, I can you know, already it tell goes this into is like the... going to be... It's going to be interesting. Okay, so... Now, this is the trick, is folding it the right way. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this. That's pretty good. And, and roll it a little roll bit. Roll it. Right. And then it goes the, with the folded side down in the skillet so that um, it forms a little seal yeah. where so you fold it. Yeah, so there's the seal. It. And I'll walk over to the kitchen. And I already put some oil in here. And you, you got to be patient with this stuff because you got to let it sit for yeah. long enough for that seal to really form. Yeah. And fingers crossed it doesn't bust open. <laughs> um, all right, so we're just gonna check to see the color. That looks pretty good. So that's probably ready to turn. Mine, unfortunately, came open when I tried to set it down in there, so. Although mine's got a little open pack right yeah. too, but. There's probably gonna be a disaster on the other side of mine. So I'm not gonna really show it just now. It's, it's okay. gonna turn into a taco salad, basically. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but yours is, yours is much better. Turns out it flipped out fairly well, but I still blame the size of the tortillas. It's, yeah, it's definitely the size of the tortillas. What's going on, Gordy? What do you need today? Yeah, you're tired? You just came in and started crying again? What's up? What do we need? Where are we going? Yeah, it's not time for the wet food yet. We're gonna wait until a little bit later, big stretch. What do you need? There's food in your dish. There's water in your water. Yeah? What are you trying to tell me? They're on the outside, buddy. I'm trying to get that bug. They're on the outside. See? They're on the outside. I know. You're quite concerned about this. You chase the other ones away, buddy.
damage the screen. Sorry, they're gone now. So this is our usual morning routine as we get home. And the best part? They're waiting for hey us. Guys. Good morning. Well, we've already said good morning. We did. They're up early. I should let you go first because it would have been easier to... Hi, buddies. How are you? Usually Waffle's on the dining room table, so it's kind of funny. She's usually there. over there. Gordy is usually here. She likes to be between the two chairs. Yeah, we can't separate them now because she is right in the middle. Good morning. Hi, you guys. They're nice and calm now. You'd never know that at about 6.10, they were charging all over the house while I was trying to get them fed. Acting like crazy, well, I was gonna say crazy people, but. Crazy cats. Now they're nice and low key. Hi, buddy. Good morning. Oh my gosh, you're so happy. <laughs> All right. All right, we're back, and uh, we're gonna have some music tonight. Yeah, it's not, it's not gonna be an all um, Bruce Springsteen thing from here on out, just in case you're worried. Um, but it does happen to be, well, last week, since we didn't record a show last week, last week was uh, Bruce Springsteen's 72nd birthday. Which is funny so, because I had no idea that he was in the 70s. Really? I know. Oh. I, don't, I don't know why I wasn't thinking of Of course, you know, he's been around for a long time, but why wouldn't he be in his 70s now? Yeah, and uh, so uh, just, you know, so everyone can, to put your mind at ease, we're not going to, I'm not going to play guitar every time. I'm not going to be singing tonight. <laughs> but I'm not going to be singing either. That's another thing I have to work on is playing and singing at the same time. But, you know, it, since we've talked before about the fact that we took guitar lessons, and um, since it's Bruce Springsteen's birthday, I should point out that aside from our lessons, where we did not learn any Bruce we did uh, songs, that's basically all I've played, um, you know, all I've learned on my own. Uh, a few Clash songs thrown in, but that's not really quite the same thing. I even, I'm going to admit it, I bought this guitar because it is very similar to the one Bruce plays. Um, yeah, Nothing wrong with that. It's a t Fender Telecaster. But, um, but you know, when, the first actual song I, I like figured out on my own outside of class was uh, The Promised Land, which is one of my favorite Bruce songs. It's actually, I mean, some of it's really complicated, yeah. but a lot of it is just super simple, just a handful of chords, but he, you know, he makes it work. Um, but the other thing that I like about Bruce, and I think this is what really is kind of the point, is that, you know, he's got this image of being this like, I don't know, super like blue collar guy. He, and I've mentioned this before, he always jokes about the fact that he never really had anything like a blue collar job, right. but he, that's the kind of music. He writes about, you know, he writes a lot of songs about cars and factories and working on the highway and stuff like that. But the best thing about him though, is like beneath that sort of like veneer is that everything he ever writes is really about, you know, people who are kind of like, you know, outsiders, whether it's because they're on economic hard times, you know, the, the factory in the town closed down, everybody's out of work or, you know, just, 
all this all this kind of like outsidery stuff and i think that's what really appealed to me the most when i started listening to his music it wasn't like the idea of working in a factory or working on cars or whatever like that's like that. you know that's like kind of like the superficial level of it but it's all the you know a song like born to run which i will not attempt to play because that's a little outside of that's above my pay grade as i say um you know that's you think of it as oh that's such a cool song. You listen to the words and it's totally about you know feeling like you're kind of left out and you don't fit in and and how you're going to deal with that so that's that's cool and one of the things that really kind of brought that home to me was on his birthday th there's a there's a trans journalist that i follow who writes her name is sydney bauer and she writes a lot about sports and things like that and she's a little younger you know than i am needless to say well, i don't know if it's needless to say <laughs> but in fact she's younger than and, but she posted a, um, some videos, uh, Bruce Springsteen videos, on his birthday, and I thought that was really wild, you know? Like, he, you know, he has such an appeal, he kind of, like, um, he, he kind of, his music affects so many different people from so many different backgrounds. And the more I think about it, you know, it kind of makes sense. I mean, again, it's kind of like that outsider thing. I jokingly referred to him, and I responded to uh, her, one of her tweets that I jokingly referred to as the patron, patron saint of the outsiders. Uh, but it's really kind of true. And what I, what I uh, liked about her post is that the song she uh, chose was Prove It All Night. always been one of my favorite songs and that song like uh the promised land which was like i said the first song i kind of like really figured out on my own that um that's those two songs are from the album darkness out on the edge of town which came out in 1978 and we talked about this in the very first episode we did, did which is like that was the album i was 16 years old that was the album that, like I, I fell in love with like i knew bruce i liked his music but that was the thing because it had kind of this hard edge. There was a certain kind of, I don't know, it's not like really anger, but just just like this kind of like unvarnished, you know, hard look at life that was really appealing to me. And that's when I started going back and listening to all his other music. And that's kind of when it like really got to me that that's what he was singing about. Like, you know, songs like uh, uh, Rosa, Rosalita, which is like, you know, was his big, huge hit before uh, the Born to Run album. Um, you know, talking about my machine, she's a dud stuck in the mud somewhere in the swamps of Jersey. This whole thing about being kind of down and out, but you know, things are gonna turn around for him and all this stuff. Uh, it's Fourth of July, Asbury Park, talking about, you know, being a young adult, kind of having lived this life on the Jersey Shore, not the show Jersey Shore, yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, trying to figure out like you realizing you got to kind of grow up and get on with your life mm -hmm. so that that was really cool and then you know he did write a lot of blue cotton songs like Youngstown but Youngstown is about you know whoops Youngstown is about you know a town falling on hard times when the steel mill closes and he talks about how you know they've had a steel mill uh, since, you know, the, time, the Civil War days, and then finally, you know, uh, everything kind of falls apart in the factory town. And he's talking about his, you know, the, the main character talking about his dad saying that, you know, the owners of the, of the mill, you know, they shut it down and they, they did what Hitler couldn't do. You know, we, this, this town, we, we built the tanks and bombs that won this country's wars. We sent our sons to Korea and Vietnam. Now we wonder what they were dying for. And he's talking about, you know, the aftermath of, of all, you know, factory shutting down and all that stuff. So even when he's talking about blue collar themes, he's talking about, you know, people who are down on their luck and left, the side, left to the side.
appeal to me and what I think makes him such a universally liked person, uh, musician, is that he just, you know, it's music for the rest of us. I have to finish with one thing. Okay. So when we did our very first show, which was only a few minutes long, and we were talking about, uh, that was on the 45th an um, anniversary of the release of, yes. of um, Born to Run. And my favorite song on that album, of course, is Thunder Road. I'm trying to get the chords right. Oh man, now I can't see what I'm doing. Pay no attention. first couple of verses. Very good. That's um, awesome. Although I did scrub a couple times, but I, I covered for it. Anyway, nobody so knew. nobody knew. Um, but I, I do uh, I do think there's a lot to be said for, you know, somebody who kind of writes for the rest of us. And that's what I, that's what I love about it. And him. I also think like in real life, he's very down to earth, you know, and yeah. his writing is, but I mean, just as a general person, I think he's like really down to I think that's true. And I think that's what's really kind of appealed to a lot of people. So anyway, pardon my sloppy guitar playing and uh, uh, the we mistakes and all it. that. Um, I promise that I won't play anymore forever. <laughs> that's what I have to promise the kids because they're so tired of hearing this. Um, but anyway, by the way, a little thing, little trick is if you ever see Bruce in concert, a lot of times he's playing with a capo on his guitar so he doesn't have to play bar chords. So even Bruce is, can cheat. Yeah, that is so, a tip that we learned. And it was so, just like genius. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's not, that song doesn't necessarily require bar chords. It's just shift it up a step and a half. But uh, anyway, so, so that's happy a little, birthday, happy Bruce birthday, Bruce. Bruce. Uh, and if we'll, you happen to see us, we'll tag you. Yeah. The next time you're in Chicago, just, you know, we'll right. go out with you guys. <laughs> All right, we hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Uh, let us know what you thought about it. Uh, and uh, if you want us to do more of the same. Too much cats? Not enough. <laughs> I already know there's too much guitar playing. <laughs> Apologies for that. I thought it was great, um, though. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. You're deluded. <laughs> but otherwise, I do appreciate it. Uh, I will say we had some sound issues with the, um, the music clip. Um, we did use our microphones uh, but then when we played it back, um, you couldn't really hear the guitar. I don't know. Maybe that's a good thing. But so we deleted the, the soundtrack that we recorded separately and just used the iPhone sound. So that's where the hiss comes from. The reason why we do this is to avoid that. But it didn't work that well. 
But I thank you guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it because yeah. we had fun um, doing it. And I that. promise I'll go at least a month without playing the guitar. <laughs> well, I'll play the guitar. I just won't videotape it. That's okay. I think it's good. Uh, and I did not sing this time, but maybe once I will sing. Um, I, as I mentioned, I, I, that is my biggest weakness. I mean, I don't have a great voice anyway, but I just have not mastered the art of singing and playing simultaneously it is you really it is have to a, work it. yeah it's a talent to like well and they it, it, it's really good to do because it helps the playing you know it helps you keep the rhythm and it helps you kind of you know know exactly when the chords should come in and this and that so it really is kind of an important skill even if like me you don't sing particularly well that's something i'm going to have to work on and which we will uh, so we hope you enjoyed this week's episode. One thing, though, we do oh, have yeah. to mention, though, in passing, is that today is the sadly the fourth anniversary of Tom Petty's uh, dying. Yes, uh, we're big Tom Petty fans. Huge. I saw him many times. You've I've seen saw him, him before, times. and we saw him together in May of 2017. As it turns out, just a few months before he passed away, absolutely one of my favorite artists yeah. of all time, um, and. I won't play any of his music, um, but I, I love Tom Petty, and it's just, it was so sad that he passed away so soon after we saw him. I know. It's, it was very weird, uh, and lucky that we um, yeah. took the chance when friends of ours offered to get tickets and have us go yeah. down to Avi, so I'm glad we went. Yeah, and the thing, of, the thing that just, uh, even just, you know, in the moment, watching him, what really, first of all, he sounded great. Even though, uh, yeah. you know, this was like it was like the 40th anniversary tour from when, when he started out. Um, so obviously been at it for four decades, but he sounded great. He looked great. He played great. The band was great. But the thing that really got the, the emotional part of it was that he was just so genuine. He was like, you know, every artist will say thank you after they play a song and people applaud. But I mean, like he really meant. Yeah. Like he just was like so appreciative of just being there. And the fact that, you know, he made some quip at one point. He played a song and he from I think it was from the album Long After Dark. It was from one of his like late 70s early 80s albums and he's made some comment about you know you weren't around for this ha ha because you know it's so kind of a young crowd and i'm like no 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 i was around for it not <laughs> only was i around for it but i saw him on that tour in the same arena at the university of illinois when i was an undergraduate so anyway it was just it was great and i i miss tom petty i love his yeah. music so much and a life uh, cut definitely too short another guy like bruce just had a just a knack for knowing how to write a simple song that was really great yep so anyway so we will see that um i i'll sing a time Pet i might sing a time petty song later i'll work on it i'll uh, i'll well we could play i won't back down that's what we, i was thinking about we actually <laughs> learned that one in our guitar that's class that's exactly what i was thinking about and head. it's really easy to play okay what if we okay we're gonna we might try that i might be willing to do that it's scary but um <laughs> Wildflowers is another really easy okay. one to play. Anyway. So we hope you guys have a great week. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or comments. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.